So if you're watching this and you're thinking, oh my God, I've seen this Wilma before. Yes, you have. I'm filming two in one day because I just don't want this beauty to go to waste. I love it so much. I look so gorgeous. So this is a very last minute video. I put this together today. I will probably forget some books. I'll hate myself about it later. It's not that big of a deal. Oh life, you silly goose. Of course you forgot some books and I'll be back to tell you about those later. I want to make a, oh, I just put, touch the mic, didn't I? Didn't I? So I just wanted to make a recommendation video of all the books with non-binary and or trans rep. The first one is Girl, Woman, Other by Brandon Evaristo. This takes place, I think there's uh, 12 people in majority women. There is one non-binary character in London. So it talks about the black femme experience in many different ways. Uh, it tackles like abusive relationships. There is a gay relationships in this. I really loved it. I don't talk a lot about it, but the ending wraps it up beautifully. I adored it. I highly recommend it. Definitely don't talk too much uh, enough about it, but this was pretty great. The only problem I had with it was the writing stuff, but this was really good. Highly recommend it. Uh, this is Pew by Katherine Lacey. So this is a more calm novel. It takes place in this town where all of a sudden a character that they name Pew uh, shows up, they sleep in churches and the whole town is going crazy over this person that they don't know what gender they are, they don't know where they come from and Pew's kind of like, why does it matter? Why are you stressing out over something that's like literally not important? And so they literally say they can't help you, they can't do anything for them unless um, they tell them like what gender they are and all that. So it's very calm and not much happens. And there's just like conversations. Pew is a very quiet character, but I really enjoyed like the conversations and some quotes in this, highly recommend. Then we have two books by Aquake Amezi. This is Freshwater. I absolutely adore this for many reasons. Writing is weirdly like mesmerizing and spellbinding and it is like part memoir, I think. I mean, Dear Synthuron coming out this year, maybe June even. This was never like something that was officially a memoir, but that one is, but this one has definitely parts of uh, Amazie's life in it. I highly recommend this one. It can be quite tough with like a lot of stuff, but the main character goes through like top surgery, which I love, uh, non-binary rep, I'm pretty sure. So adored it a lot, uh, but I also adored the death of Vivek Oji. Obviously it's about the death of the Vivek Oji. Everything that leads up to that takes place in Nigeria. Um, the family situations, how everyone feels about Vivek's death. I can just say it's like trans rep. It's very unclear what exactly, but I think that definitely just adds to the book. I adored this. I cried a lot. Like the ending was too hard for me. It was too, too hard, too hard. <laughs> okay, then we have another book I, I wish I talked more about and I will definitely reread at some point because I listened to this as an audiobook, and that is Supper Club by Lara Williams. So this book is essentially about this woman who starts a club, a feminist club where they just ravage food as like an act of reclaiming their like womanly power. So there is definitely trans rep in this, but it's more of like the side characters of other people who are part of this like empowerment eating. Like it's, it's very good. I highly recommend this one. I don't know how to like explain it other than I found it very powerful and I loved it. Then we have some sci-fi. This is The Seep by Chana Porter. So this takes place kind of in like our world today, but this entity called The Seep like seeps into our reality and submerges us into like this utopian wor world. And Tara, a trans woman main character, she's not really down for it, you know? And she struggles a lot because her girlfriend also wants to transition into a baby, which is something The Seep allows uh, with its power. This was just amazing. I thought a lot about it. Still don't know what I think about all these opinions, but love it, love it, love it. Then we have questionable trans uh, non-binary rep, but for sure. The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. I think this is a fantastic, classic -y sci sci-fi. Um, your follower, a main character, Mr. I, who is an envoy who goes down to this planet trying to convince the people of winter to join like their intergalactic alliance 
and the people on Winter basically have no gender or they have both genders simultaneously. They kind of go through cycles of being like man, woman, and go between that. So the gender roles are very mixed and there's a lot of reflections on gender in this book. It's also about friendship and it has a great atmospheric winter environment. I love it a lot and I don't know, I have so many books buyers like Kayla Gwynn and I don't really understand why I haven't picked up like any of her stuff. Yeah, probably sci-fi classics, but I just love this a lot. It was fabulous. Then we have like a recent e-read. Um, this is Finna by Nino Capri. So Nino Capri is also um, non-binary, which I adore. So this is this duology. I don't know if there's gonna be more, but it is so fabulous, so good. This is like if you're in a reading slump and you just wanna have a good time, you want something quick, you want something action-packed, you want something easy to read, but with great, hilarious commentary. I adore this. So in this world, there is this capitalist <laughs> store called uh, Lit and Bad, which is basically Ikea. And in this store, these portals open up. Maskual, which is like um, wormholes, open up to different realities with different stores. These two follow two different main two different main characters, but they both have non-binary side characters, and this one I think also has a trans woman. Really adore this one. It has a great commentary like capitalism and stuff. Just absolutely brilliant. Am I being very brief? I'm hot. I'm really hot. Am I getting sick? Do I need food? Water? Something's wrong with my system. Is it this wig? I don't know. So give a round of applause to Life Goofer for telling us about all those amazing books with trans rep in them. But I think I have read some books that they haven't, so I guess I would tell you about those as well. The first one is a book that I don't really talk about a lot actually, and that's To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. I read this in 2019 and I absolutely adored it when I read it, but I read it after my favorites video came out and never ended up like included it in a favorites video. But it definitely is a favorite and it's one of those books that I would really, really like to read. It has like an amazing queer cast in general, but there is a particular uh, trans man rep in here, which I love. I feel like there is in general more trans women left rep in literature than trans men, so I really adored that. There's also ace rep, our lesbian romance, and some bi slash pan rep, unspecified. But this basically is about uh, this crew of four astronauts who are sent out to explore other life on other planets and record it basically. But because there is a delay in information transferred from Earth, they get a lot of information and news from Earth many, many years later when it's no longer applicable, which creates this like very tense dynamic. It's definitely a slow burn, but it's so lovely. I absolutely adored it. And I honestly can't wait to read, like reread this one. It's just an amazing novella sci-fi, uh, oh, amazing. And then I also have another book that hasn't come out yet, I believe, is coming out 17th of June, 14th of June, or July, I mean, something like that. And it is A Sound for the Wild Built. I'll include it here because it will soon be available. You can definitely pre-order it. So this follows our non-binary friend. I already forgot their name, but they're a tea monk who travel around and give advice to people and give them tea. And they still feel like unfulfilled with their life. So they're basically about like them trying to figure out why they're still unhappy and it's very cute it takes place on like this moon in space it's like a story about humanity and robots and how they ended up like splitting up after coexisting for a while and why their relationship didn't work and so robots are like not existent in society anymore it definitely has like super cottage core vibes kind of like i have right now even though it's not my aesthetic at all uh, and I absolutely adore this one. I highly recommend it. It's oh, Becky Chambers. You just, you know what you're doing. <laughs> then I have a recent read that I actually ended up really liking. This is The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis. So this is an epic uh, sci-fi that takes place in space where humanity have kind of split off and become rivals. There are the alliance of Mars and Earth who are more like religious and down to earth. And then there's the alliance between like Venus and Mercury. How they can exist on those, live on those planets is still kind of a mystery to me. But then there's those people and they're kind of technology heavy. And then you follow three different characters. One who is like bi slash pan. The two other characters are like warrior partners. And one of them has disappeared hero. And hero is non-binary. And I felt like the ending has some amazing reflections on gender dysphoria. It made me cry because it was so like emotional trying to imagine like what Hero went through. 
in throughout this book. So I really like that reflection and the friendship between Hiro and our main character Lito is just to die for. After that I have another book by Nino Capri. So Nino Capri I think is like slowly becoming a favorite author because I've liked all their books a lot. This is a short story collection with multiple queer representations, a lot of trans rep. They're, the last story which is the biggest is like the friendship between a trans man and trans woman which I adore. It also has non-binary rep and they're basically magical realism short stories. Most of these are five stars, some of them are a little bit like three stars but this is just such a joy. Nino Capri has like a way of making magical realism really really fun, really queer and yet make you think about so many things and I just adore all those things together. And here we have the subtweet by Vivek Shreya. This is a contemporary book that follows these two magician, magicians, <laughs> musicians who are both trans women of color and kind of their relationship as it progresses but it also has bigger reflections of how no one wins when minorities are fighting with each other I think and I really like this book a lot. I think Vivek Shrey is an amazing author. I did give this like 3.5 stars because I think the writing is not brilliant but I did like the things that it triggered in my thought process and what it made me think about. Then I have a book that I, I always forget I read this one because if I don't have a physical copy I just forget that I read it and that's Felix Ever After. This this book is like so famous you know and like so known for having like trans mask rep you know so Felix lives with his dad he goes to a school that I think is generally pretty accepting but then one day his birth name is posted and his old like pre-transition pictures are posted in like this art gallery all over his school and then he starts catfishing the person that he thinks did, did those things. So it definitely has a lot of queer rep and there is definitely a lot of conversations about um, LGBTQIA plus issues and allies place in those issues and discussions as well as having like a character who does something that's like morally gray I guess. There is also some like gay action going on. And then another book I would like to recommend is The Impossible Beauties uh, by Joseph Cassara. So I definitely will put like loads of trigger warnings for this because it's very hard to read about. It follows the house of extravaganza in the 1980s and start of the 90s. They are like a ballroom house and they consist of like two trans women and two gay men and it is Latinx which I adore and they struggle a lot. There is the eighth AIDS epidemic going on, the HIV epidemic. It's very tragic, very sad, trigger warnings for like sexual assault, abuse, all these different things, drug use and addiction, but it's definitely worth the read if you want to get into the minds of these characters and get to know them and love them and then watch them die. It definitely have, doesn't have a lot of plot but I still will never like regret reading this. It, it was still a joy even within the sadness. Then the bat last book that I have to recommend that I just got in the mail is Wonderland by Juno Dawson. This is an Alice in Wonderland retelling. Juno Dawson is a trans woman and the main characters in this is also a trans girl and I think she recently described this as skins meets Alice in Wonderland or something and I think that's such a great description. If you don't know Skins, I recommend watching it. I think it's fantastic. Hey baby. Hi. But this basically follows our main character Alice who goes to this party called Wonderland I believe looking for her best friend Bunny. You know Alice following a bunny into Wonderland. You see where this is going? And she meets like the cat, the twins, like all these characters, like the worm that's smoking the pipe. So like all the elements of Alice in Wonderland are there but it has like a dark skin teenage uh, misery feel to it. I think the audiobook is fantastic and read by Juno Dawson herself so I highly recommend checking this out. I think Juno Dawson makes really fun and interesting characters and books. I really love Alice. She's so kick-ass and she's so strong in her transness and defending herself and I just love seeing that. So these are the books that I have read that Life apparently didn't read. So back to them and they're going to tell you about some books that I didn't enjoy as much but that have very valid trans non-binary rep. Back to you life. Then lastly I wanted to mention some books that I personally didn't love but I want to throw out there that they have non-binary and trans rep. Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. The trans rep in this is like a little bit sci-fi-y. And then we have Every Day. Actually, I really like this book when I read it. It follows our main character, A, who 
wakes up in a different body every day so they kind of like take over different bodies like they don't have their own body they just wake up in another person's body every day there's a sequel that's kind of like the story we're told from uh, another character's perspective i have a review up for this like one of my first book reviews i would recommend checking it out but i think definitely like non-binary rep or like demi boy rep i don't know then we have the deep i feel the main character i feel the main character um river solomon is uh non-binary and i feel like uh, one of the characters is kind of like genderqueer, if I remember right. Main character, perhaps? Uh, wasn't my personal favorite. Pat by Quick Messi also didn't. This, this was a two star for me, I think. I didn't like this at all, but it follows a trans girl with like a very supportive family, which is great to see. And the last one is The Black Tides of Heaven by Neon Yang. In this world, this like fantasy world, People aren't born with a gender, they get to choose like when they come of age, which I think is very cool. I think that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's like a bit chaotic and I'm like a bit tired at this point. And like, did I actually even tell you what these books are about? Um, did you get any book or make my record? Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Any rip. Hmm. Shutting down. Did you get any book recommendations? I don't know. Let me know. When I started filming for too long, I do get like very chaotic in my head and I don't know what's going on. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though like this look is not new at this point and you probably heard about these books before. This course is really digging into my underboob. Shit. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this vid video. Uh, comment down below some book recommendations whether they have trans and or non-binary rep. Um, I wish you all a really great day. Happy Pride. I will talk to all of you soon. Love you all so much. Bye.